adding services to Blazor WebAssembly app. So in order to configure or install our dependency injection, basically we're adding classes into our WebAssembly Blazor app that we're going to be using as a singleton. In order to do that, we're going into program.cs as we see here, and then we register our dependency. We have to use the interface, then class method. That's how it's done. Next, after the host is built, services are available from the root DI scope before any components are rendered. So this means our dependencies will be available before the components in Blazor. If you're new to Blazor, you need to know what a component is. A component is a Razor page because Razor pages in Blazor are components. They are reusable, they're modular. You can interchange them and pass parameters as if they were functions, which is incredibly useful and is it was previously only available in JavaScript. Now it's available on Blazor, you only using C Sharp, no need for JavaScript, but you can still run both. You can still run Blazor, Razor, I mean C Sharp and JavaScript parallel to each other, both of them, okay? That is awesome. Once we initialize our dependencies, our classes that we will be using inside our WebAssembly app. Remember, it is standalone. It runs on the client side, so it doesn't require any server. It can run offline off the internet, so it is better in that sense, but we have to keep it low weight in megabytes because we do not want to have too much stuff in there. So be wise as to the amount of dependencies that you install in your app on Blazor WebAssembly. Continuing to read the documentation, this is basic stuff, but it is good to understand and a little bit hard to understand in the documentation sometimes. The host provides a central configuration instance for the app. Basically, we're initializing our app. It's what it's saying. Building on this example, the weather service URL is passed from a default configuration source. So the important stuff, the secret strings, the tokens and all that stuff that connects to the database, it will be passed in the app settings.json. If you want, if you guys are interested in knowing how to add app secrets, how to keep app secrets to avoid them from being stolen, let me know in the comment section. We can add a video and talk about app user secrets. So, because remember, Blazor WebAssembly, it's totally client side. It is totally public. Whatever you put there, even if you use an obfuscator to render the code human unreadable, it will still be available to the public. And if somebody has the resources and the technology, they can totally um, reverse engineer your code and figure out how to hack it. So be very careful and use user secrets and don't store anything that you don't want people to have access to on the client side. Okay guys, now it's the part that we all been waiting for. We need to request the service in a component. Remember guys, what is a component in Blazor? It is a view, it is a razor page that you can pass around as if it was a method. Okay, after services are added to the service collection, inject the services into the components using the inject razor directive, which has two parameters. Remember, it's after we add the services. Here, it's unclear if, the, if Microsoft is talking about the Here, it's unclear if Microsoft is talking about WebAssembly Blazor apps, or if it's talking about server-side Blazor apps. So keep that in mind. I'm going to test this code. If you guys have any trouble, let me know in the comment section. So because it's saying it's general, 
it says request a service in a component we can understand that this is talking about both server side blazor apps and client side blazor apps we hope that is the right interpretation after services are added to the service collection inject the services into the components using inject razor directive which has two parameters the type of the service to inject property the name of the property receiving the injected app service the property doesn't require a manual creation the compiler creates the property so we're going to name the property in which we will be referencing in our code that service that we injected in our app okay so we can use multiple inject statements to inject different services that's great remember guys if you're running on WebAssembly Blazor, it will get heavy on megabytes. Remember, this is going to download the entire app so the person can use it. There are ways to trim it. If you guys want to know how, let me know in the comment section. In this example, we will see how to use the inject service implementing services.idatax access is injected into a components property data repository. Note how the code is only using the idata access abstraction. Okay, so here, this is the start of a razor component. Remember, a razor is a page that we can pass as a method and we can use in different parts and it will create a view and it is totally modular. Okay, that's why Blazor is so awesome idata access it is simple to use it is incredibly simple to use idata access data repository okay so there we injected our service remember guys it was first created or initialized in our program.cs up here as we mentioned before program.cs this is where we added our dependency or our service or our class or our API class that we're going to use to call, etc. Okay? So, going back here. Here we are injecting our service in a component remember a component is a view you can pass around as a method and use modularly to build different views and it's faster it's more efficient okay so here we inject it and we here we use it simple this is the code this is the HTML and it has some C sharp in it because remember we're using razor so we don't need to use JavaScript anymore Okay, guys, so internally, the generated property data repository uses the inject attribute. Typically, this attribute isn't used directly. If a base class is required for components and injected property are also required for the base class, manually add the inject attribute. Okay, guys, so in case you're using inheritance in your injected services or classes to access your API, you will need to put the inject attribute on top of your property. That is how we will be injecting from an inheritance standpoint. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comment section. Okay, guys, finally. Remember, this is Blazor, WebAssembly, and all we're trying to do is just to connect to the Web API. So use the I in services. This is a little bit of a big, uh, okay. Complex services might require additional services. In the following example, data access requires the HTTP client default service. This is what we need to access our API. This is where we're getting to finally accessing our API because we're in a WebAssembly app. We need to communicate with our API to provide data. So our data access class requires an HTTP client. That's required. At the inject attribute, 
it isn't available for use in services. So what we can do is what the Microsoft documentation is saying is constructor injection must be used instead. So we can use a constructor injection. What that means is that required services are added by adding parameters to the services constructor. So remember that before we added a service. Let's go to our added service over here. Um, so here we added our service, program.cs, right? We're adding our service. Remember, it's an interface first and then a class, my dependency. But the thing is that we can also inject classes and services, however you want to call it, in the constructor for this class. That's what this heading is telling us. So it's a little bit overwhelming. It's, a, it's not extremely concise, but basically it's saying inject or the inject attribute isn't available for use in services. Constructor injection must be used instead. Required services are added by adding parameters to the service constructor. So we can just add parameters, as we can see, to our constructor. When DI creates the service, it recognizes the, service, the services it requires in the constructor and provides them accordingly. In the following example, the constructor receives an HTTP client via DI. So basically, what this is saying is that if you create your class and you inject it so you can use it in your WebAssembly, and that class has to call the API, remember, you can also pass services on your constructor parameters. That's basically what it's trying to communicate. It also says that if you need to do injection there is the whole other new way of doing this. You know, Microsoft provides different ways of doing things. And the other way of doing it is also the inject attribute, which we can also use when we are dealing with inheritance and base classes. And this is another way of doing the same thing. We can add our injection, basically use our class, instantiate our class in the constructor parameter when we register in program.cs. I hope this is useful and clear and understandable. So here are the prerequisites for the constructor injection. One constructor must exist whose arguments can all be fulfilled by a DI. Okay. That's a little bit hard to grasp. Additional parameters not covered by the I are allowed if they specify default values. Okay, so okay. Previously, we understood that we can add dependency injection inside our constructors. We can add classes inside our constructors. And that if that class is registered in program.cs in WebAssembly Blazor, we're cool. That's great. We can use it. No problem. Here's a rule. Additional parameters not covered by DI are allowed if they specify default values. Okay, so if we add more classes to the class that we already registered in program.cs, then they must have default values. I'm guessing they don't want null dependency injections. The applicable constructor must be public. One applicable constructor must exist in case of an ambiguity. DI throws an exception. Okay. Okay, guys. So basically, this is how we add a connection to our API in Blazor. This is how the documentation tells us in Blazor WebAssembly, client-side Blazor. This means we can use an API and we do not need to be online all the time. I hope this was useful and you guys could understand a little bit better the documentation, which is most of the times not so easy to understand. I hope this was useful. And if you guys like it, please share, like, subscribe, and have a great day.